Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So I've been uploading to this channel for just over a year now and during that time I've received quite a few questions about how I create my content and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you everything that I do to create these videos. I'll be showing you how I record them all on my iPhone, the settings that I use, what equipment I use, how I come up with the ideas and how I edit them. I'll even give you a rough idea of how long it takes me to create these videos each week that are roughly about 10 to 15 minutes long. Now the point of this video is to obviously show you how I make my videos, but hopefully it'll give you some ideas and inspiration to create your own. I'll also give you some advice at the end of how to start and the gear that I recommend using. Everything that I cover in today's video is linked in the description, so feel free to check that out, and if you've got any questions at all, just drop those in the comments. So first up, what do I use to record the videos that you're watching on my channel, including this one right now? Well I'm actually using my iPhone 12 Pro Max, and before that I was using the 11 Pro Max. That means every video in 2020 was filmed on an iPhone. And the reason that I've been using my iPhone over my Sony camera is it's just so easy to use and it's always with me. It also shoots in 4K, the stabilisation is brilliant, and the video quality is pretty decent. I mean it's never going to be as good as a three to five thousand dollar camera setup that most channels use, but yeah it's not bad at all. And it definitely hasn't stopped me from creating videos on my channel, and it didn't stop me from growing to 51,000 subs in my first year. So I usually shoot using the wide lens, just the normal lens on the phone, and the picture quality is great. I mean the telephoto lens that I do use from time to time as well is awesome for creating that kind of depth of field, and it gives that cropped lens look as well. And then the ultra wide lens, I do use that as well, and I tend to use that when I'm either walking around, and I need the shot to be a little bit wider, or I use it for my in-car shots, like my point of view when I'm driving. The issue with the ultra wide lens though is it's very noisy, especially in low light, and I'm not usually happy with the results. But most of the time the iPhone looks incredible, especially in decent light. Now I always shoot in 4K30, and I use the most compatible option in the settings. Now I did used to shoot in the high efficiency option instead, but it always resulted in random glitches in the footage when I was editing, so that was really frustrating. So I then swapped over to most compatible and that definitely fixed it. But it does mean that the file sizes are a little bit larger, but that's obviously a compromise that I'm willing to make. So I went for the 256 gigabyte option. Now it's rare that I fill this before transferring or deleting the videos off the phone. And when I'm not using my iPhone, I actually use my wife's 12 Pro. Like now, for example, that's how I'm recording this shot of my own phone. And as for the battery, well, I can use my iPhone for anywhere between three and five hours shooting all of the content that I need for a video. And that's without worrying about the battery at all. But something I have been meaning to buy this year is a power bank. And it means that I've got one with me just in case I was to run out of battery when I was shooting. So yeah, every video on this channel is filmed with just an iPhone. So I'm using the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I was using the 11 Pro Max before that, but to be honest, any phone will do. When it comes to creating the videos on this channel, one of the most important accessories that I use is a tripod. It's how I get the slow panning shots from side to side, and it's useful for getting stable shots as well, for when say I'm recording my car driving by or an unboxing video and so on. So up until May last year, I was just using a $15 tripod that did the job. It was super light and then it broke on me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend a little bit more and I'll get something decent. So I picked up this, I think it's called a Manfrotto 055. It was £150 or about $200, which for an iPhone is definitely overkill. But it's lightweight, compact, feel solid and it has the ability to flip between horizontal and vertical without having to remove my phone. So it's got this cool kind of center piece here, center column. And as it pulls up, it lets the arm move over and out and then you can use it for say flat lays or overhead shots and things like that. But it doesn't come with a head though, and that's the piece that you need to connect your camera or phone to the legs. But as the cheap tripod that I've been using before that already had a head, probably worth about $2, I unscrewed that and I actually just used this on the new legs. So I might get a proper one in the future, like a fluid head or something like that, but they are about $150. And then to attach my phone to the tripod, I just needed one of these adapters. So I picked up a $20 kind of metal adapter off Amazon. Now this feels really secure, it's solid, it screws the phone shot as opposed to being spring loaded which you, I know you can buy for a couple of dollars or so and plus there's a cold shoe mount on the top as well so if I wanted to attach say a microphone or a light I could do that. And that's how I get these stable panning shots, I use a tripod. You don't need an expensive one like this though, anything will do, the $15 one that I had before was absolutely fine but just make sure you always use a tripod. So next up, which is probably the second most used accessory that I have, and this is the DJI Mobile Gimbal. So I'm still using the Osmo Mobile 3. I know there's a fourth version that's out now, but it's not really worth me changing to it for the small tweaks. And this cost me $120 or about £99 for the combo kit. So the iPhone stabilization is pretty decent anyway, you don't need one of these. But this gimbal makes the footage that little bit smoother. It also allows me to walk, move and pan with very little juddering or vibration. And it means that I can also hold my iPhone with one hand if needed. It's kind of like a mini tripod. And it definitely makes it easier for me to get those shots that I need. 
So I will use this gimbal for any handheld shots. At any point that I'm not on a tripod, it's in the gimbal. So here, for example, I'm doing a slow pan of my car mirror. Nothing special, this is just to demonstrate it. And you can see here, as I move the tripod up, it kind of pans really, really smoothly, giving that real nice professional look to it. It's also how I get every shot that you see in either my TV or my desk setups. So I hold the gimbal, usually with two hands, just for extra support, and I just move really slowly. So it isn't slowed down at all in post editing or anything like that. It's just me moving to the side and it's really smooth and really stable. It gives that nice look to it. So yeah, I really think this is an awesome accessory for anyone wanting to film on the phone, especially if you're going to be doing it handheld. And this isn't just for YouTube, this is for any videos in general. So when it comes to creating some of the videos that you see on my channel, usually unboxings of phones and drones and so on, I do a flat lay shot from above. So how I create these isn't using the tripod that I showed earlier, it's actually using the shelf on my wall above my desk and one of these clamps. So I clamp it onto my shelf, I hang it off over my desk, I fit my phone into it, I line it up, and then I hit record and that's it. So it's a nice easy way to get these type of shots where I can unbox and show you from above without trying to work around a tripod in my way. And if you've seen any of my Tesla videos on the channel, I often show an in-car or point of view angle. Now this is done using a sucker mount that I stick to the glass roof of my car and I put my phone in it. Now the, the mount itself was only about £15 or $20 or so. And it's a great way of getting that GoPro style shot. Now I know this isn't for everyone, but if you're thinking of doing a road trip or you just fancy doing some driving and you want to record it, this is an ideal way of doing it. Now most of the time I use natural light for my videos and the same goes for my Instagram posts. So whether that's my car videos, my TV setup, my desk setup, I rarely use anything else other than natural light. But sometimes I might be doing an unboxing at my desk and the light outside is too poor and I need a little bit of help. So I use one of these softbox lights. Now I've got two of these, I bought a pair for about £50 or $70 and they do an okay job for what I need it to do, it's nothing special, there's probably better out there. But you can see here it does make a massive difference so if i needed that light today then obviously this makes a huge difference for that video now the next piece of kit that i use is for recording my audio i'll show you how i create and i record this a little bit later but i use a blue yeti mic for my voiceovers so it's a usb mic it just plugs straight into your computer there's no need for any kind of third party accessories at all now this mic does come with a usb type a cable but i bought a usb c cable separately and that meant i could plug it straight into my macbook without any adapters now I've only had this since June last year, so for about six months now, and before that I was using the Rode Video Micro, and before that I was using a cheap pair of Astro A10 headphones. And that was my first 20 videos, so the first 20 videos on this channel were using the Astro headset. And recently I bought this $20 microphone arm, and it means I can now have my Blue Yeti mic permanently attached to my desk. Whereas before, I used to have it sat on my desktop, so just in front of my keyboard, the Blue Yeti would sit there, and I'd end up, it, it just get in the way, to be honest, so I'd end up knocking it by mistake and I'd have to re-record. Whereas now it's on this arm, I can move it out of the way, and when I'm ready to start recording, I just plug in the power cable, which then goes into the Mac, and I'm ready to go. And attached to the arm, I've got this pop filter, and this is to prevent you from hearing popping in the audio as I'm talking, and they are called plosives. So this is me saying popping with a filter on, and if I just move this away now, and this is me saying popping pop 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 with a filter removed so you can tell here it sounds pretty bad so i'm just going to move that back on now and hopefully you can hear the difference okay so popping pop 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 and that was only about ten dollars so definitely worth it so when i'm either recording my audio or i'm actually listening back to it i use a pair of monitoring headphones now these are pretty flat with very little bass now i did a ton of research before buying these and they are very very good and ideal for listening to voiceovers so these are the sony mdr 7506 and they cost me 90 pounds or about 120 dollars and as the blue yeti mic that has a headphone out port actually on the microphone itself it means i can actually listen to my own voice as i record so i know if my audio sounds okay so that's all of the equipment that i use to record the audio and video and next is what i use to store and edit it all so I'm using a 2018 MacBook Pro. It's the 15 inch base spec model. So that's the six core i7 with 16 gig of RAM, no extras at all. And I've edited every video on this Mac. Now, memory wise, I'm currently using two one terabyte SSDs. And these are the SanDisk Extreme. And they're really, really small. So they fit in my laptop sleeve quite nicely. Next, I wanna show you my workflow, how I plan, create and edit all of my videos. Okay, so first up, how do I come up with the ideas for my videos? Well, I actually have a spreadsheet and that's where I put down all of my ideas and I just jot them down. It could be something simple like desk setup or a rough idea of something I want to do. Plus one idea will always lead to more. So for example, desk setup are videos that I've done in the past that could lead to a monitor review that's already on the desk setup, a keyboard review, a chair review. So one video will always be a gateway to more. 
I mean, just look at my Tesla videos, for example. I've somehow managed to create 27 videos about that car last year. That's nearly half of my channel. Now, most of the videos that I create on my channel are things that I actually buy and use myself. I rarely buy things just to review them on here. But failing that, if I've got no ideas, I don't know what to do next, just turn to YouTube for inspiration. For every video that I've already created, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of the same video already. So I'm not unique and I'm not original at all. Just get an idea from someone else and kind of do your own thing. So once I've got an idea, I will then loosely plan what I want to do with it. So I open up a template document that I've created, and in here it's got everything that I need to create my content. So I write down 5 to 10 subheadings, and they are headings that I want to cover in the video. Then I take my notebook, and I write down ideas that I'd like to record. So what I do is I will actually take this notebook with me when I'm doing my recordings. Now these will just be simple ideas, they won't be kind of full walkthroughs of what I'm going to do. And as such, it means I won't forget what I want to record when I'm doing it on the day. And on top of that, I do have an obsession with writing lists and ticking them off as a go. It makes me feel really productive. So this is the fun part. This is where I can actually start to create some content. So I will take my iPhone, my tripod, gimbal and notebook and I will make a start. Now usually this is on a weekend as I work during the week doing my day job. Now it depends what I'm actually recording. So if it was a Tesla video, for example, I could be out and about for three or four hours getting the shots that I need. Sticking my phone in the tripod, driving past, jumping out, moving it doing another shot. I mean, I could literally move my phone or the tripod three or four times just to get that one shot. And then if I'm doing an unboxing or a tech video, well, these might take me about two hours or so of recording the different angles that I need. Again, I'm using the list that I created earlier to capture the footage that I need. And once finished, I just copy the files from my phone onto my MacBook and obviously onto the external SSD. And to do this, it's really easy. So I open up the camera roll, I select the videos that I've created, and I send them across to the MacBook using AirDrop, and that's it. I then copy these files onto the SSD and I keep the files organized into folders so I know where to find them later. And then once copied and backed up, I just delete them off my phone. Okay, so the next part is the script writing and that's probably the worst part for me. Not because I dislike it, but because it takes so long to do. And I'm always going back and rewriting what I've already written. So if you didn't know already, every video that I create on this channel, it's scripted by me. So there are two reasons that I write a script. One is because it means I don't really have to worry about what I'm going to say. And two, because I proofread it afterwards. And it means that I can remove any of the things that I repeat and I can cut out the fluff. I mean, I just want to get straight to the point. I don't want to bore you with me saying the same thing again and again. I don't want to bore you with me saying the same thing again and again. Then on to record my audio. And as I mentioned before, I used a Blue Yeti mic. And although it's an awesome mic, it's really, really good. It's very, very sensitive. And it picks up almost every bit of noise. Now I sit down, open up Audacity, which is a free audio recording software, and I read the script out that I wrote word for word. Now I always have my headphones on as well, and it often means I can listen back to the sections just to make sure that they're okay. As I record, I actually leave long gaps or pauses, so it means afterwards I can actually see where the subheadings start and end. Now once recorded, I only do two things. I run a noise reduction effect, and it removes any unwanted noise or background noise, and then I just export it ready for editing. Now this is the fun part for me, I absolutely love editing the videos. So taking the random video clips, usually about 50 or more, and the audio that I recorded, and making it all fit. So I edit everything on my MacBook and I use Final Cut Pro. I only started using this at the end of 2019, so the first video that you see on my channel, that was my first time using Final Cut Pro. And I just started kind of messing about with it really. Um, I don't do anything fancy as you know, it's just kind of a few cuts here and there. So I create a project first under either Tesla or Tech, again using 4K30 to match the videos that I've recorded, then I rename it so it makes sense to me. I drag and drop the video and audio files in that I created earlier, and then from here I just create a base layer, I drag the voiceover in and I colour code it so I know which is the voiceover if I was to use uh, music on top of this. I also have some audio presets that I've created, so I've actually done this by listening to my own voice and kind of tweaking the levels until I was happy with the result. Out of the box, the Blue Yeti is pretty flat, so it definitely needed some work. I will then quickly go through and I'll find those audio gaps that I mentioned before while I was using Audacity, and I will then cut it up into the sections, and I can then see where each of the subheadings will start and end. So if I decide to use music in my video, I will use Musicbed to source it. It's a royalty-free music website. If you're interested yourself, there's a link in the description, and we will both get a month for free. Once a video is edited, which usually takes me about three to five hours realistically, I will then add my intro and my outro text, which is basically just my name and a subscribe button, and then I will add my own custom LUT preset, and this is the filter or the colour grading that you see on my videos. I've had my own Lightroom presets for a few years now, and I've taken those presets and I've made my own LUTs as well, so my videos kind of have a similar look to my Instagram feed, at least that was the plan. 
Now, I might sell my LUT and Lightroom presets in the future if I get enough interest. So if it is something you're interested in, just drop those in the comments and it might be something that I sell later this year. Okay, so now I do a final run through just to make sure that I'm happy with it and I export it. So I use the computer option and I always choose 4K and then I export. So if you want to see more about how I actually edit my videos, let me know about that in the comments as well. Because what I might do is I might create a dedicated video on this alone. So literally just my Final Cut Pro editing process. So now I create the thumbnail. This is probably one of the most important parts as well. So this is usually the image that people see before they even click the video. So I create them all in Lightroom. I either use a photo that I took at the time or most of the time now I actually just take a screenshot from the exported video. And that's a video uploaded. I've got the title, the description, the tags and the image that I need. And then once live, I try and make sure that I'm available to reply to comments and engage with everyone. I kind of treat it as if you've taken the time to watch my content and leave a comment, I've definitely got the time to read and reply. So how long does it take to create these videos? Well, that varies depending on the subject and how long the video is going to be. But I would say these averages you see on screen are probably about right for a 15 minute video. Now that's for everything that you see from planning all the way through to going live. Now, if I did a talking head type video that most creators do, and I didn't do any script writing, I could probably create a 15 minute video in just a few hours. So I'm definitely creating more work for myself by doing it this way. But I create these videos because I enjoy the entire process. I didn't start this channel to make money. I did it because I wanted to do something creative. Definitely don't start a channel this year with the sole purpose of making money because that will come later if you put the effort in. Just enjoy making what you want to make. Review products, do a vlog, whatever your passion is, just create content about that. And in terms of where to start, my advice would be use whatever phone that you're holding right now there's a good chance that it shoots in 4K, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter, just shoot in 1080p or whatever it does. I didn't spend any money at the start of this. I used what I had in my pocket, so I had an iPhone 11 Pro, I had an old tripod that I'd had for several years, and I used an Astro A10 gaming headset to do the audio. And only then, months and dozens of videos later, did I start spending money to upgrade my accessories. And even today, a year later, 55,000 subs, 9 million views on this channel, and I'm still using an iPhone to create this content. So if you're wanting to create some content or start a new channel in 2021, think of an idea, write down some subheadings and go from there. Any questions, just let me know in the comments. And don't forget, I've linked to my entire kit list in the description of everything that I've used in today's video. And you've just made it to the end of this ridiculously long video, so thank you for sticking with me. Well, I really hope that this was useful. I know I don't do anything crazy. I'm not a crazy editor at all. It's pretty straightforward and basic, really. But I wanted to give you some inspiration that if I can do it, you can do it as well. So if you drop in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you've made it to the end. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button if you're this far in as it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.